Alright, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today we're going to be going over Google Webmasters, aka the Google Search Console. Um, so they kind of go by the same name, the same it's the same tool. Um, but what you want to do to get started is we have google.com slash webmasters open here. Um, and just to preface this video, you might want to go through our Google Analytics tutorial for beginners. We just put it up uh, a little bit before this video, so you should be able to find it on our channel. Um, we'll have it linked here, but on the video you'll see it uh, linked. So you want to look at that because the way we set up Google Webmasters <clears throat> is we use our Google Analytics account to link the link the two accounts together. Um, so you might want to look at that video to see how to set up Google Analytics. Uh, I'm going to play a quick video now on how to set up your Google Webmasters um, and then we're going to come back to the video and I'm going to go through each of the links and Webmasters and all the things you need to know um, using real data from one of my websites. So uh, we're going to have the video play now and then uh, I'll be back to kind of show you some more about it. And in here, and now it's going to give you a welcome to search console and we're going to do the same thing we just kind of did. So HTTP www.farmhousegoals.com all right, so there's different ways to verify ownership of farmhousegoals.com. If you just installed Google Analytics, you should be able to use that as an alternate method. So let's just do Google Analytics account verify. All right, so congratulations, you've successfully verified your ownership. Um, so we're going to click continue here. So now we have this set up. The next, the other thing you want to do is you want to add another property here. So we're going to go to Search Console they're going to usually send you a message right away that says improve the search presence. Um, it's going to say add all your website versions, select your preferred version, select target country. We're going to add all website versions first. All right, so so the only difference here is instead of adding www, we're just going to do farmhousegoals.com. So the reason why you want to add both is sometimes people will come on your website and actually monitors that data differently so um, here we're going to go into alternate methods again click Google Analytics verify okay so both of our websites are going to give us a message usually so let's see I take a minute for that one so let's just say in the www.farmhouse goals all right so here improve the search presence so that's going to be in our messages added all website versions that's good set your preferred version so you can kind of tell Google is your preferred domain display URLs as www or just display URLs as farmhouse goals? I like to just display as farmhousegoals.com and save. So now what that means is that a lot of your data will start to come into this up here as farmhousegoals.com rather than the www version because we just set that as our preferred version. It doesn't really matter which one you prefer. Uh, it's just up to you. So we'll come back into this message here. So select target country. So our language says Google has not yet processed the property. That's fine. So our target country, we're going to do target users in the United States. Save. It doesn't mean your website won't show outside of the United States, but if your website's kind of geared towards just people in the United States, that's what you want. So share access with coworkers. So if you have other people that you work with, you can actually add their email and they can have different levels of permission and you can just add them to your website so they can monitor and manage everything. Um, submit a sitemap file. We're going to do that in a second, but uh, down here at six, learn how to work with Search Console. So if you want a little bit of a kind of tutorial for how to use Search Console, I'll go through it a little bit, but um, you know, here's a good tutorial here. You can do down here real quick is if you see Acquisition Search Console, I just want to go in here and we can click Set Up Search Console Data Sharing. So since we just set up the Search Console, uh, what we want to do is click set up data sharing at the bottom here. So here we go. Search console, adjust search console. And we're going to click edit where it says none. And we're going to let this one. So the one without the www, click save. So if you see over here, there's a lot of different things with your property. You can link things. So AdWords, AdSense. If you go to all products. Uh, so search console now, it says actively linked, receiving data. That's good. Um, so you can link your AdSense accounts, AdWords, Ad Exchange, BigQuery. There's all these different things you can also link, but Search Console is one of those ones you want to link right away because now we can go into, oop, not audience acquisition, and go into Search Console and go into landing pages. And there should be, even though there's no data yet. All right, good. So that's this. Once you get this page, it means you're you're starting to kind of talk to each other. So.
Okay, so that's kind of an introduction about how to get started with Search Console and how to link your account um, using Google Analytics. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come uh, sign into Google Webmasters and we're going to go into one of our properties. So you should have it set up now. Um, you're going to start collecting data. Uh, if you are already getting uh, some data from the Google search engine, if you're already getting some traffic, you should have data come in fairly quickly. Um, but if you're not, it might take a couple weeks and you really have to improve your rankings to get more data. So. Uh, what you're going to do here is click sign in. Um, so we've signed in. We've already clicked to our property. We want beachfrontdecor.com. Um, so I want to show you some different things here. Um, so you want to make sure your webmasters and Google Analytics properties are linked. Um, for some reason, mine became unlinked uh, recently this week, so I linked them back up. But you always want to keep them linked because I'll go into Google Analytics and look at some of that data as well. Uh, they have some overall things here, your site maps, uh, your crawl error, your search analytics. So what I want to do is come down here to the left and show you some different things uh, that you're going to use frequently when you're on the Google Search Console. Um, up here top right, the only thing I'm here uh, for the most part is with Google Analytics property to make it make sure it's uh, set up properly and then users and property owners if you have other advertisers you work with, um, if you hire out advertising agencies or if you have a couple different people that are working you can add them here. Uh, you can add different types of uh, different types of like uh, user levels from like admin to just someone who can just see the data so uh, just that's something that I use every now and then I'm when, I, when I'm giving people uh, access to some of my data or if I'm hiring somebody so uh, let's come down here the first thing is messages so messages is going to tell you everything that basically everything that you need to know about your uh, Google search console account you'll get any notifications in here that are very important uh, if your site's been hacked you'll get something in here when you first start with um, your Google search console you'll get an opening message um, that you kind of want to go through and look at everything there. So uh, messages, just somewhere to kind of look every now and then. I like to look. Uh, I probably sign in almost every day to Webmasters, maybe every other day. Um, and the messages are good because sometimes they'll tell you things that'll help you uh, know know how to make changes to your account. So, so the first thing we want to do is come over here to Search Appearance. So we want to click on Structured Data. So Structured Data is a way to tell search engines uh, more about your website. So think about if you own a recipe website and you have a recipe on your website, you have a picture, you're able to tell Google some different things like, okay, this part of our website is the recipe, this part of our website is the rating, the average rating on the recipe, this part of the website is the image, uh, this is going to be our featured image. Um, so it's a way for Google to kind of uh, see your data better, um, structure data. and. When you have a WordPress website and you have um, the Yoast plugin installed, you can turn on structured data. Uh, so that's kind of how I do it. I have the Yoast plugin installed, so I have structured data turned on. So a lot of it's automatic, and you just want to make sure that uh, whatever your website is, that you're using the proper structured data because it helps with Google to show like cards and to show uh, rich snippets in the Google search results. So if you go to Google right now and search different recipes, you'll start seeing some of those things come up from popular websites like Food Network and All Recipes. So structured data is a way to tell Google uh, different things that are on your website and helps them process your data better and helps them serve your website better to people. So very important thing with structured data uh, for this particular website. It's not too, you know, too in depth because my I don't really have recipes. I don't have things like that. It's more just like content based. So uh, when someone's searching for certain keywords, you can look at structured data and make sure you can have this optimized. I like to use the Yoast SEO plugin. Um, so it'll show all your items with structured data here as you go. Um, I have it went down recently because I kind of just uh, messed around with my plugin. So this is kind of good to show you. Um, but you can see some of your errors. So if you have errors here, you can try to fix them. Usually the errors aren't terrible, but you can see some of the different markups for structured data. So there's microformats.org, schema.org. Um, if you're not sure how to use structured data, and trust me, I'm not a professional at it, uh, there's a lot of plugins through WordPress. There's a lot of different things. Um, automated solutions you can do and that's the best way to do it now because it'll take too much time to try to do it manually so structured data is good and it, uh, the next thing we're going to go to is rich cards um, so rich cards again is they work with structured data so you're looking at rich card structured data on your website so you can see it's really good um, about events products or opportunities uh, so my website personally, my products are affiliate products, so I don't use rich cards, otherwise I would. If you have an e-commerce website with affiliate or with real products that you're selling, uh, you want to use rich cards for sure. Um, if you have events on your website, so maybe, uh, you know, 
concerts coming up in New York City. If you have a website that's based around, you know, tickets in New York City, then you have a rich card set up. Um, so I don't have a rich cards here. These are more of an advanced thing for your website. Definitely something you want to use if any of these work for you, events, products, opportunities. So think about things that you can show people um, in the search results that will help them visit your website better and you can promote things better. So rich card structure data, a little more advanced in the search console, um, and they only really work for certain websites better. So things you want to like really research and get started with if, if you think they might work for your website. Um, data highlighter, this is pretty cool. So you're able to see, uh, kind of show off your site's data in search. So improve your look in search. You can see some different things here. Let users see your key information right in search results. So if you click start highlighting, what you're able to do is enter the URL of page on your site. So I take beachfronttocore.com. Okay, so it says enter the URL of a typical page on your website. It says tag this page and others like it. So we'll do that. All right, so it says type of information to highlight. So this is all the different things that you can highlight here. Um, so let's say I come in here and I say, you know, let me highlight some of my products. So let's go, okay. Okay, so here's what you're going to see. And maybe what this would work better for is an actual product page. But what you can do is come down here and maybe I see, hey, here's a product here. So I could start tagging some of these things. So you come in, so you tag that as name. So I take this, tag that as image, take this tag that as pricing. Um, so if you start doing this with more of your pages, uh, you can have your data highlighter so that in Google search results, so let me just click done. Okay, so you're able to show different things about your site's data in search, like structured data, event listings, review ratings. Um, so it's, it's something good to use and it's something that you can show with some of your product pages, you can start doing it and then Google is able to show some more things in the search results. Um, this is something I actually want to set up on my website, so I want to do a follow-up tutorial to show uh, some of these advanced things with uh, highlighting pages because it's a pretty cool way to uh, improve your, your overall search results and your search traffic. So if we come down here to HTML improvements, they'll be able to show certain things like I have duplicate title tags here, duplicate meta descriptions. Um, so my meta descriptions are usually pretty good here. Um, if they find things that you know, things aren't indexable with certain content, they'll show you here. Uh, so this is good for finding duplicates. So I would come in here, click duplicate meta descriptions. Um, and it has a couple different pages. It looks like that there's the same meta description here. So it's probably just the way the content was set up. Um, so I can improve these like right now and go into them, adjust them. And then you come back to HTML improvements. So I want to make sure there's no errors here. So next thing is accelerated mobile pages. So I recently probably about a month ago, I really dug into accelerated mobile pages um, and I'm starting to have more content with accelerated mobile pages added to it. So there's an accelerated mobile pages plugin through WordPress. You just want to download that for every page. You can create a accelerated mobile page version of it. So it's a little bit bare bones. You have the same content, but some of the images might be smaller. They might not load completely. Um, so different things like that. You're able to see some of your accelerated mobile pages with critical issues. So if I go invalid, uh, CSS sheet, I can come into here and see like why are some of these errors happening. So some of these errors have happened recently. Um, you can see it's higher up here, but usually what I do is if I see these errors, I come in here and I make sure that the uh, content is matching with each other and I make sure everything's done correctly. So sometimes when there's an update in the plugin or different things like that, you have some issues here. So 101 index pages, I have six pages with critical issues. You definitely want to go in there and I, I need to fix some of these things. So for me already, just going through search appearance, I already see like I need to start using data highlighter better. Um, rich cards and structured, I have structured data set up, but um, rich cards, I don't know if it's going to work for my website. I can see with maybe some products if that's going to work. Um, coming to HTML improvements, I can see some of these duplicate meta descriptions and title tags. Um, so I need to fix these now and then accelerate mobile pages. I have six pages with critical issues and then I know I have more than 101 pages that can be indexed. So I know I just need to keep indexing these. So search appearance, it's it's important because the better your search appears in search results, the higher the click-through rate you get in the Google search results, the more traffic you're going to get, the more they're going to show your website. At the end of the day, and this is my guiding, guiding principle with Google, Google wants to serve the website that's the most relevant for the user where they're going to spend the most time, they're going to go through the most pages, and they might revisit again, and it's going to be useful. And if your website doesn't have those categories and those characteristics, then you're going to struggle with your website. So 
Beachfront Decor, it's a good website for people who are looking for beach home decor, uh, beach home furniture, different things like that. But I know if there's other competitors that have better pages than me and things like that, Google's going to serve them up in search results as they should because they're better than my website. So your job is to make sure that everything from the appearance to the content to everything makes people stay on your website longer. Next, search traffic. This is probably the best part of the whole entire search console. So we come in here to search analytics. And what you're going to see is you can filter by date. So Google had an update recently here. So our website took a little bit of a hit. And it's good to see that for you because you're going to have these hits every now and then. Um, so if you're ever working with clients, things like that, and something goes up or down drastically, you always kind of want to wait it out a couple weeks and see how things are. Just make sure your website's still you know, indexed in Google properly, all things like that. Um, sometimes when you start seeing drop-offs like this, you might have a security issue. Um, so that's why I also like to track these things, but it just was a Google update. So you see it go down a little bit. You can see our daily clicks kind of staying pretty low, and then they're, they're almost doubled now from where they were about a week ago. So you can adjust dates here. Um, so you can compare date ranges um, and see what how many clicks you have, different things like that. We're just going to keep it as last 28 days. Uh, it's a good, good time frame here. Um, and let's go through all the different things you can see. So you can see clicks, total clicks, and what the search queries are here. So these are our total top click search queries right now uh, based on the content on our website. If we come to impressions, so we can see, you know, beachfront decor is our brand name. So we have a lot of clicks, you know, not a ton of impressions, but a decent amount, about 99 in the last 28 days. If we click on impressions, these are our top keywords in terms of impressions. So mermaid bedding, nautical chandelier. So we have different um, content on our website and these all match to certain pages. Um, so if we want to come up here and say, okay, what pages are getting the most impressions? You know, take out search queries and let's look at what pages. So our homepage, number one, most clicks looks like probably the most impressions too right now. Um, our mermaid bedding and comforter sets, uh, in particular our accelerated mobile pages page here uh, is doing very well in the search results nautical bedding sets beach chandeliers so this is why you want to have accelerated mobile pages set up because you can see we're doing pretty well with some of our pages here uh, beach tapestries accelerated mobile pages beach chandeliers um, so you can see it'll show separately for the desktop version of the website um, and, and this isn't all desktop traffic there's going to be some mobile traffic that comes in through here but accelerated mobile pages will show a lot in the search results when people are uh, searching on mobile and they're going to be at the top too. This is why you want to jump on it now, um, get involved in it. Uh, so countries, this is good if you want to see where people are coming from. So for us, we're United States for the most part. Um, you know, we have some other countries that come in here as well, but United States is really our, our main country. And then we have uh, Canada usually does fairly well, but it's a little further down down here with in terms of impressions. Then United Kingdom is usually strong. Um, devices, so if you want to split um, by the different devices here and you could also look at things like click-through rate and average position so let's just show everything so desktop or average position 43 it's not great honestly um, you can see tablet and mobile people don't go as many as far uh, for some of these pages so we're not getting as good of our position uh, desktop we have a lot of impressions here I think what we need to do uh, in terms of beachfront decor is improve mobile impressions um, because we're getting a lot of clicks here um, and tablet kind of just feeds off these too so um, search type you can see uh, like how people have searched um, so saying it has no additional information so we could just see our search queries if you want to filter by image results um, so it's not showing that either oh, we have 491 clicks this many impressions from image results so reset it to web and I want to show you come back to queries here so we can see for what search queries so let's just say I want to see what have high impressions, but maybe not the greatest position. So nautical bedding looks like an area of opportunity. Our average position is 40.7, but we're still getting a lot of impressions. So it's probably a keyword with a lot of volume that we want to maybe come in here and say, okay, let's see what page it's probably getting the most impressions. So let's see. I know we have a nautical bedding article here somewhere. Maybe I'm just missing it, but some of it's going to, oh, there we go, Ultimate Guide to Nautical Bedding Sets. So what you want to do is open this and start optimizing for it. So that's what's really cool about uh, the Google Search Console is you can see a lot of this data and keep optimizing your data so you're driving more traffic through Google. Um, this is something you want to keep playing around with. You can see some of my data here. Uh, if we come down, 
let's go to page two. So if we go over to page two, you can just keep seeing all these different keywords. And what's cool about it is, so I, I see seashore door wreaths. Uh, I'm on the 8.9 average position, 11 impressions in the last 28 days, two clicks. I have a page that I with beach door wreaths that I know I can optimize for this keywords a little bit and try to keep improving that. Um, same with nautical fan poles, uh, surf bedding. I have an article about surf bedding and surfboard bedding. So they're getting some clicks and impressions here, but the average position can definitely be improved. So if you want to just keep improving your content there. So that's what's just so important. All right, so search uh, appearance again, rich results. So this is just our normal results. And then, um, you know, accelerated mobile pages, non-rich results here. So you could see high click-through rate here, pretty better, a better position. Um, not as many impressions, but actually almost as many clicks. So the next thing we're going to do is come down here to links to your site. So you can see who's linking to your site, uh, what content is being linked the most. You can see how it's being linked. So we get a lot of outdoor wicker furniture linked content from some of the summer things we did, uh, furniture, DIY, nautical area rugs. If you click more here, you can see some of the other pages that are linking to you. Uh, some of these are good websites. Some of them are a little little out there. Um, so you could use the Google disavow tool if you don't want some of these websites to to be linking to your data. You could disavow them from from the Google search results. So some different things here you can see. Some of them are pretty good links for us. So um, it's good to know with links to your site. If you see people linking to your site, you could always go to their website, uh, reach out to them and see if they want to, you know, feature any of their your content, things like that. So that's kind of how I use this page. I'm not on it too often, but just something to know. Internal links will show which of your pages will have the most internal links. Um, so we have all of these pages linked right from the home page. So they're all showing a ton of internal links. If you keep going, you'll see it kind of starts dropping around down a little bit. So nautical pendant links, we have links pretty well. Surfboard towel hooks, you want a lot of internal links. Maybe not as many as we have for some of these, but um, internal links are good because even though you could just see like certain things here, let's see. All right, so just this wood signs, all you need is love and a sunset wood plank sign. So we probably have that linked from some of our different pages, some different related products and posts. Um, so having linked pages is pretty good because Google can see your pages better. Uh, you want internal links to be solid. So if you see, find internal links too. Sometimes if you're trying to find why certain blog posts aren't ranking as well, you can try to see maybe they don't have a ton of internal links. Um, when you click on them, you can see um, some of the different links here so just just a lot of different things that you can see from best porthole mirrors so if you come into manual actions it'll show if there's any web spam actions that google has done on you uh, manually um, we have none here so if you're doing some black hat techniques uh, sometimes google will show you here that you're using black hat techniques and they give you a manual web spam action where you have to fix it uh, in order to maintain your rankings or keep them international targeting so if you're targeting different countries or languages so we said before we're targeting in the United States the most um, languages you can add different um, preflang tags here um, to match different users language preferences so for us if we said okay maybe we want to add uh, Spanish tags um, Google will help translate our page and then we'll, maybe we'll show up in the Spanish search engines a little bit better uh, maybe people who live in Mexico who want beach decor things like that so we don't do international targeting too much but just something good to know mobile usability so you just want to make sure that you have no mobile usability errors to be detected um, so if you don't have a mobile friendly website it'll show that here uh, that's a big issue you definitely want to fix that as soon as possible Google index down here so this will show how many pages you have indexed from the last year so this start goes back to last year we're pretty steady here uh, we went up a little bit because of the way our sitemap was we actually just recently fixed it and so it's gone down a little bit this is actually where I want it to be is somewhere around here if you come into advanced, you can see a little bit more and things that are blocked by robots. Um, so we have some things blocked by robots here, which is fine because we don't we want them to. We've told them to be blocked. Uh, so blocked resources. Um, so they've blocked just this one. I think it's the Instagram widget we have on our website. If you have blocked resources here, sometimes they go up and down. Um, you want to fix them because you don't want things to be blocked. Sometimes it'll show different uh, pages or things like that, but we only have this here. This is fine. If you click on it, you can get a little bit more data about it. Remove URLs. If you want to temporarily temporarily hide any URLs from your website, um, so if you delete a page or something like that, um, or if there's just a page that's a little sensitive on your website, you can remove them. So 
it's good to know we don't really remove things on our website often. Sometimes we use 301 redirects and things like that, but we don't really remove any URLs and hide them from the search results. So crawl, it's coming to crawl errors here. So you want these all to look good. You want your server connectivity to look good, robots fetch to look good. Um, it'll show URL errors uh, if they have anything not found, soft 404 server errors. So server errors usually happen from your hosting account. So if you have any issues with your hosting account and they're having trouble showing pages, sometimes they'll show here. We don't really have too many um, not found. So sometimes you get issues here. You get 404 issues for certain pages. Usually for us, it's just temporary. Um, but what you can do is you want to fix these here. So if you ever remove a lot of pages from your website, you're going to get some desktop crawl errors usually because Google added those pages to the search results. You can see a lot up here. Um, we fixed those. Now we're down, kind of go up and down, but you just want to keep fixing them. So with Google, anytime they have trouble accessing one of our pages, they'll give us a 404 response code. If you delete a ton of pages, um, you'll get a ton of 404s for those. So what you want to do is come in here to the crawl errors, desktop, whatever's not found. I like to show 500 rows and then click up here and just click mark as fixed. So you don't really need to do much on your website, but as long as those are real, you know, as long as you still have those pages or if, you know, if, if it actually correct, you just want to click mark as fixed. It's showing Google that you're paying attention to your data. Um, so same thing here. So anything that's not found, these should all be fine. It's probably just uh, a temporary thing where Google can find something. So I'll fix that faulty redirect and sometimes you can find actual errors in here so if you see anything that's um, so these are blocked by us so we want them to be blocked so mark them all as fixed so you don't want errors when you start fixing errors they'll come back down here and you want to keep your errors low because the more errors you have the less Google will keep you uh, in the search results as high as they are because they want websites without error crawl stats will show how many pages are crawled per day um, I think it's over the last yeah 90 days so uh, for us our high pages per day is about 8500 it's pretty recently it looks like um, so I like to have usually when these are higher so pages crawled kilobytes downloaded uh, time spent usually when these are higher we are getting more traffic to our website so it's kind of sometimes when they go low we see things kind of go down and then when it goes up we see some some more traffic so I like to try to keep my pages crawled high. Um, I'm not sure exactly how they do this because we don't adjust things like crazy every day. I think it's just a matter of how much the Googlebot visits you. Um, I think the more that you're updating your website, because we've done tons of updates recently, the more you're updating it, I think they crawl more pages and download more kilobytes, which is good for you because they just keep putting more of your data in their search results and in, improve your search results ranking. So, so fetch as Google, um, what you can do is take our website desktop and go fetch and render so you can see how Google renders pages from your website so we have a couple here that we've done um, if we go to mobile smartphone you click over here so it says Googlebot mobile smartphone it has your HTTP response sometimes it'll have a screenshot um, so fetch as Google usually I do this every so often so you have desktop partial if you do request indexing um, it'll crawl this URL and direct direct link so you can kind of just tell Google, hey, I updated my website. So sometimes that's good to do. But it's really up to you how you want to do this. So if we click on it, so we have a partial render as Google, and it'll show this is how Googlebot saw the page, this is how a visitor is seeing the page. Um, so that's fine. It's saying Google couldn't get all the resources for this page, so it's saying certain things are blocked by our robots file, which is good because that's what I want. So if we come over to robots txt text tester, um, so I disallow a lot of these pages. I don't want all my products. These are just pages that are made on my website, but they're not really useful in search engines, so I disallow them. Um, so you have a robots.txt file. It's usually uploaded in your main server directory file um, or directory folder. Um, so we, what we're saying here is user agent. The star means allow all, allow all bots. Disallow means don't allow the bots to look at these pages and take them away from search results. So use disallow for any type of directory you don't want Google to index or see. Um, you can test this if you want Googlebot just to make sure everything's good. You'll have errors and warnings here if anything's wrong. Um, this is a good, you, sometimes you just have user agent star and then disallow none, different things like that. So I disallow certain pages that I've seen in search results and next is sitemap. So we have our sitemap through Yoast SEO. 
Um, we've recently kind of updated it, so it's a little bit lower here, so I need to kind of go back there and make sure everything's good. But what it what we're telling Google is uh, every update we have to our website, so when you have your sitemap index file here, um, we can see this is built by Yoast. Um, so they have some different sitemaps all in here too that have updated fairly recently um, or have been last modified. So sitemaps tell Google um, what to index. Uh, if you have any errors, then they'll tell you here. So some different errors here. They have errors in each of my sitemap files. So this is something where I probably have an issue with the sitemap here. So let's come into product sitemap one. It's saying unsupported file format. So it looks like it's a .xml file is supported, but we can kind of troubleshoot this right on the video. That's going slow. But sitemaps are good. You're telling Google. Um, you could use the Yoast SEO plugin. There's Google sitemaps for WordPress. Uh, you could also just set them up on a bare bones website wherever you're using. Um, and what you want to do is come in here and go to add test sitemap. Um, you should have a page that your sitemap is on and then just click submit and it'll start adding a lot of your pages to the search results so I gotta come in here it looks like I got some errors in my sitemap so URL parameters are used uh, for really more of an advanced feature as uh, so you can see use only if you sure how parameters work so parameters will tell Google certain certain things so they know which pages to show or they'll help track additional data from certain clicks to pages so for example let's have beachfrontdecor.com slash you know product ID equals one two three four that tells Google okay when whatever product ID there is matched with the product ID on my website and pull up the correct product ID so it's good for people who use product IDs and then for URL parameters it'll automatically redirect to the correct page um, you could also use URL parameters to track your URLs. Um, so if you want to track certain clicks, so maybe someone clicks on a URL in your menu, you can say this click came from someone who was on our homepage, clicked our menu. So URL parameters definitely more advanced, uh, something you kind of need to know how to work with. Uh, I could do a whole video tutorial on URL parameters because they're pretty uh, pretty advanced feature here. I don't really use them for much of my websites at all. I've only used them a couple times in the past. They're, they're definitely something you you need to know how to use. So security issues, if you have any issues here, um, they'll show you any security is issues. They have resources for hack, site, hack sites, um, cross-site malware. So if you have any issues, it'll come up here. Web tools, they have some pretty cool web tools here. So once you click web tools, it brings you to a new page. Um, you can look up your ad experience report uh, if you're running a lot of ads. Uh, you could look up some of their testing tools. So again, let's look up structured data testing tool. Go to beachfrontdecor.com and it'll help show whether or not your structured data is implemented properly. Okay, so it'll show here and it'll say, you know, some different things. So it has URL beachfronttocore.com and then it has a couple different things in here. It has our logo. Um, so this is all just structured data. It's telling Google all sorts of different things about our website. Um, so the name of our website here. So here's our URL template. Uh, so just some different things here that you're telling Google. Um, you want structured data on your website because it just gives Google a better way to uh, to index your website. So that's our Google Search Console, aka Google Webmasters Beginner's Tutorial. Um, good way to kind of go through and see different things in the search results, how your website's doing, and where to improve so you can optimize your website and improve your search engine rankings, improve your search engine traffic. So. Thanks for joining us today. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments and don't forget to subscribe.